So, balik ang pinakaunang biktima ko sa ginagawa ko ngayon. Um, but I have few questions for you as a frontliner. You know, we all, like, for those who know you, they know that you're working as a nurse. That's your profession. And right now, you're, I think, volunteer in some of the, what what's that? Kabakan checkpoint, right? Yes. So, you're doing a volunteer work during this pandemic, this COVID-19. I just want to hear from you. What are um, your your insights as a medical person, as a frontliner about this COVID-19? Um, for me, first of all, um, we were unprepared for this. Like, for example, on my part, I am working in the hospital and suddenly, because out of budget, ang um, hospital na for the for for the future na papasahuran kami that's why we were being deployed into the checkpoint para lang ma-justify na sasahuran kami para maging blessing sa community where we belong and one thing i know everything is being shaken not even lang yung mga sabi nating um sa churches alone but every part of the community and this virus is really making us somehow worried about things because everything is altered somehow i can see every day yung kahirap na yun bang other people are are really taking efforts like naghahanap sila ng paraan just to have their means of living other people are let me say um What's the term? Um, their talagang basic needs in life. Be, yeah, their right. basic needs in right. life are really talaga in short na talaga yung mga budgets nila. So, this pandemic is tiring. <laughs> tiring in a sense na kahit yung ibang mga police nakasabi na na-double yung loads. Mm. And one thing na nakakatakot kasi, you can never see your enemy. Like, as a frontliner, you will always think that that person whom you encountered is an infected person. So, you need to do a lot of efforts like disinfecting your hands from time to time. If you are a, a person who loves to shake hands or hug other people, you can do that for now because, of course, you might never know who's the carrier of the virus. Yeah, I think that's a good thing about me because I'm not a touch person. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's my problem. Yeah, so that's the problem of those touch people. But I'm not saying that I'm safe with the virus or I'll be, I will not be infected by it. But just, just looking at what's going on right now and how the, even the basic needs of the people and what we hear from the news, what we see from the news... No, it, I, I, I agree with you that everything is being shaken, not just the church, not just the, any other community or organization, mm -hmm. but the whole, the totality of humanity is being shaken right now. But as a frontliner, you know, you see things that we don't see, you know things that a common person doesn't know. But I, I want to ask, as a frontliner and as a Christian, what is, what is your not really take home because it's not yet done. Hopefully, it will be done soon. We all want to go out. We all want to see our friends, our family. But what is your take home during this pandemic? What What are your learnings as early as now? And how do you, as a cell leader, as someone who also um, leads people to, to Christ, how do you keep them accountable in, in, not just them, but also you keep yourself accountable in your walk with the Lord, with with your your intimacy with the Lord and with the people that you're leading, how, how do you uh, juggle everything? Working as a frontliner, working also as a frontliner for Christ in in this pandemic. Well, in the first place, being a relational person because we need relationships in the ministry. So right now, 
I cannot deny the fact that it is very challenging. First of all, me as a leader, I see to it that I still connected. I am still connected with my leaders as well before I get connected with my downlines because even my disciples, they are being um, asked, how are they by my pastors and even more, even my leader checking, how's your disciples? So it is really important to have that connection with them because every time that I'll go to my duty, I'll inform ahead of time my, my cell leader or my pastor for intercession. There is really power intercession, like especially there are times that um you can you can be tired of doing things for other people. Mm -hmm. I, I won't deny that because standing on a checkpoint from eight AM to five PM, whereas the shift of policemen is from three hours in the morning and six in the afternoon. So if they had their AM shift, they will have three hours. PM shift in the night will be six hours. And on our shift, it's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We only have lunch break. And it's very draining. Like, we all know that if you are drained physically, it could even affect your spirituality your emotions as well, your stability. And there are moments that rest is missing. Like you can you can you you can just have it because um you really wanted to but there is a call for duty. But as long as you are being connected with your cell leader because there are moments that they are interceding for you there are moments that you are being weakened, but you, the but their love is really overwhelming. Like I can say that their love is different from other people. That's why when I get drained, even from my duty, even for my own, let me say lapses, they are there to remind me to go back to my knees and then don't just be a frontliner wear us fighting COVID, but be more of a woman who is praying so that you know from this so that you will be more blessed um, a more blessing to the community whereas they keep on reminding me that iba yung yung impact mo sa community when you are a man or a woman of god so that's why we need god we need to be more intimate with him like how could we even share or pour out to other people if we are being drained by our own circumstances, by our own excuses, or we keep on rationalizing things? So we just need to let go, let go of those things at the feet of the cross, like pour out to the Lord. Then my shift is in the morning, so I see to it that I can still watch the live streaming in church and even take time to communicate communicate with my disciples but um for me to see to it that they are having their devotions this is my own strategy i created the group chat well there are we could we could we could um connect and communicate we, yeah we could communicate with them and we could we could as a leader you could you could assess them spiritually if they can they can share what what they've been through because there are there are a lot of locks like there are ships that they aren't into sharing at the moment especially na cell phone right yan yung isa sa ano natin sa sa setting sa communication barriers natin but because we have this um, let us say technology, which uses for for monitoring them. Like I see to it that there is a daily devotion being shared in the group chat. I assigned only a few of them out of let me say I have twenty, and I assigned seven just to make sure um, they are into being honest. Like saying I I miss kabakan where I. I I had my fellowship because most of them are Catholics. 
from the start. So they are really having a hard time having that intimacy with the Lord, but you really have to pray for them. You really need to remind them that not even a distance could separate them from you, from the family that they had, and to boost their faith more and more with hope, with God's word, with God's strength, and to to just be patient with them. Yeah. And um, before, let, sorry, I have to cut you with that. So before, um, we see technology as a dividing thing, right? For our generation and to our parents and to the people around us. Because if there is a technology, there is Wi-Fi, then we stop talking. But we we tend to go to social media and entertain ourselves. No longer this physical and, you know, the communication way. But now I see during this, and based on what you're saying, is during this pandemic, during this COVID-19, I see that technology is actually helping us now to communicate and to be connected to, to one another. Like what we're doing right now, we're doing a Zoom, which I ambush interviewed you, I ambush called you. So, but technology right now is helping us to connect and also, you know, to, to, it's another way to be accountable to, to our leaders. Like, we don't, even though we are quarantined in our personal homes, in our different households, but because of technology, we can be in church and we can bring church in our households. In, and yes. then... Now and the covering of our leaders doesn't stop because we don't meet or we don't meet at church or at school, but it gets more deeper because of the technology. Is that I what I'm, I'm thinking from what you're saying earlier? And uh, I would like to ask you personally about your personal time with the Lord. If you're working from eight to five or three. PM. 8 to 5. 8 to 5 p.m. How do you manage your own personal time with the Lord? Like, you have, most of the time, we have free times. And like what we have talked earlier and days before, that because of this, so much time, we tend to overthink. <laughs> so how do you manage your personal time with the Lord with, with this so much freedom of time? So much freedom is somehow making things more complicated for me because you can do everything that you haven't done for a while and making you somehow forget the main thing that you must do. I admit to that. And since I work from 8 to 5, I usually have offs in between 2 to 3 days off than duty because we had that long hour shift. So I see to it every night if we have a live streaming i will join and not just after that i will still just reflect and just ask the lord lord what you still want me to know at this moment and there are just moments that there are just no voice to be uttered like god is just telling me just just be free come as you are you you don't need a a fancy thing or anything you don't need other people just to come to me but i i can meet you anywhere so it is really important for us to to make priority of our time with the lord especially before going out and even thanking him for the successful day and even more to to spend more time with him not just not just plainly doing nothing there or even even the way we cook the way we we sweep the floor like you can even communicate with the lord through the spirit i agree because i think it was john piper who said that you have to stay in the presence of the lord and not just visit right so now we have yes. more time we have more time to stay in the presence of the lord to to jump in into the presence and even though because of time there's also destruction we cannot be slacking we cannot be lazy in pursuing 
what is the real deal? What, what is that one thing that you really need to pursue during this time? Because I think people, because of the need, the necess necessity or the basic needs of the people, we tend to overthink, we tend to, to be worried and then have this anxieties of what to do next, what to eat next, what to what will yeah. be my future, what will be... But one thing I also learned during this this season of being in quarantine is it's not actually a quarantine, but it's more of if you choose to press into the presence of the Lord, you are more into getting into a marinating season where after this being, in, when, when we marinate meat, right, the longer we, the meat stays in that marination, the, the, the aroma, the natural aroma from within comes out. So this yes. time of quarantine, I see it like we all here be still and know, have peace, you know, rest in the presence of the Lord. But if we are just passing it, like hearing it and not really diving into the presence of the Lord, not just visiting, but staying in the presence of the Lord, we are actually not being quarantined, but we, we are being marinated in the presence of the Lord. Where after this COVID-19, we will all go out and we, we'll never know. Revival might happen the moment the doors of our houses will be open. That's, that's yes. how I see things. And based on what you were saying, just trying to summarize everything, you know, it's important that we dive in to what really matters. What is that one thing that when we wake up in the morning, what, what are we seeking? Is it, Lord, what will be the food today? Or is it, Lord, I need you again today. I need to stay in your presence again today. I, I'm not going to leave. I, I'm just going to stay here, behold, and wait upon the Lord until the doors of my house will be open and the aroma from within that has been marinating inside of me will come out and let your revival glory fall in us, in our generation. Indeed. <laughs> Actually, there are... There are people in the checkpoint that I have encountered, especially for other professionals that are being deployed there. Like, you know what? For me, it's a platform also because they will know if you're a Christian. Mm. And uh, during my first day of duty, I was shocked. Like, there's the policeman who who talked to me and asked me, you're, are you a born-again Christian? Mm. So, and I said, Yes, sir. And why? And then he asked me, are you a musician or a worship leader? I'm like, hmm? Are you? <laughs> what? It's like, and because I was playing gospel songs, like, it is my way for me to, to just enjoy because first day, I, I really don't want to, to go to a checkpoint like, because it's out from my comfort. It's a new environment. But I have seen God moving behind the scenes and even other people really see the need the necessity of god in our lives because we cannot end this thing we can end this pandemic it's it's really important for us because it whatever that comes within us it will just outflow so for me this is now the time for us to really be more so with the Lord so that when we are being out from, yes, you're right, from the marination, like when other people could see us, there are, there are dishes that that is really, let me say, looks delicious the way we see it, like the aroma itself, that's, that's, who, are, that's who we are in the Lord. Like there is that delineation or there is that, special seasoning that we could have like example the salt so this pandemic is somehow um bringing us fears but i know this is a perfect platform for every christian to show off our faith that only god can end this one 
true. I agree with that. And when you said salt, the first thing that comes out in my mind is when it, it was written in the Bible that you will be the salt and the light of the world, right? So <laughs> I think there is something about this quarantine as well that people, I for one, uses whatever is around me to speak to me. Like you cannot just have a microwave kind of faith. You have to have a process. Mm. You have to go through a process. So, yeah, there is a lot of things going on, but basic the basic necessity that we need to develop in our lives is the intimacy with the Lord, where we spend time with Him. It's it's when we open our ears to the Holy Spirit, to the leading of the Holy Spirit, of what is going on. And, and when we read news, we don't just flare up and say, this is blah, blah, blah. But we stand on believing where it, 2,000 years ago, he died and he rose again. The same power that risen from the dead is the same power that is still holding everything together. So at the end of this all, the Lord is still seated on his throne and everything will work together for good. So I I cannot complain on the what's going on, but I choose to not complain as well. <laughs> I don't know if you get that point, but I choose not yeah. to complain because I choose to see that the Lord is teaching something. The Lord is teaching me personally something about this, that I have to grow. I have to grow deeper into him. I have to stand on his promises. I have to know who is the king seated on the throne and not be led by the fear. You, Indeed. It's just that you cannot be led by fear or anxieties or worries because if the Lord called you to be in this season, the Lord will provide all your needs. But you have to stand yeah. on your ground, which is I am a child of God. I, as a child of God, I need to be intimate to my father because the the father will provide the needs of the children. And so that's yes. how I see things. That's how I, I've, I've been um, meditating on that. You cannot let fear drive away what God planted in you long time ago. Because he is the really. king. He is still the king seated on the throne. And let me just add, um, as a frontliner, it is a platform for us to pacify things, especially when we talk about obedience. Like there are a lot of people that are complaining about the uh, the checkpoints or let me say being quarantined. It could kill us. Like you will really know those people who are being trained to obey, those people who love obe obedience, because you will know that when you obey, there's a blessing after it. And there are people who are just complacent about it. There are people who are complaining. There are people are who are complying also. And that's one thing that we should also um, continue to intercede. Because there is a person who asked me, Mom, as a nurse, um, on your own opinion, when will this pandemic end? And I answered him, it depends upon the Lord and it depends upon the obedience of men. Because the government is really trying their best, like it's best just to protect the people. But when the people are lying, when the people are not com complying and just complaining like it could kill us no one will be excused we have seen a lot of of actors actresses both poor and the rich people so this time is a very perfect time for us really to be just obedient when i i know the lord wants to rest want us to 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 just you know linger in his presence to dwell within him for us yeah you're right after this i know for sure there is that revival that will come here especially in the philippines because 
and this creates a vacuum within our hearts that we just miss worshiping the Lord, not just in our personal time, not just here in our house with the family, but with a body of Christ. Like, I know you also miss your church mates there, other people. Like, this will bring something new like never before. I agree. Yeah, that's true. Something new. So if we are, we are going to summarize everything that we talked about, uh, so it's important that even though you are in your own personal homes and doing what you're doing, living your own personal life, that you stay connected with your leaders. And as a leader, you have to be connected to your people and develop a sense of accountability and encourage one another to pursue God to pursue your inti- your intimate time with the Lord, and next is um, that quarantine is not. Sorry, I'm trying to wrap things up in my brain. <laughs> so quarantine is not a bad thing. Yes. So quarantine is not a bad thing. It's just a marinating season for all Christians and for all people who are who have a, a lifestyle that is always busy and on the go, now we have more time to be marinated with the presence of the Lord, with the word of the Lord, and know what it is like to be still. So I'm still learning about that because I, you know how much <laughs> I'm on the go as well, trying to do everything else, um, everything around the sun. Um, third is your obedience. It's fourth. <laughs> so for is the <laughs> obedience so not just obeying the word of the lord but when we put into practice the word of the lord and we tend to we should be obedient to what the government is saying and what we should be doing to to help to help end this covid-19 because no man can say it will end on, for us, Davao City, May 15. I hope it will end on May 15. I want to go out. I want to have coffee. I want to, you know, do, see things, see people. I don't know how the city looks already after a month and a half that you're stuck in the house. But no one knows when it will end. But to play our part as a citizen, we need to be obedient to what the government is, say, is saying, not because, just because we want, but because it's the best for all that we need to work together as a community and obey what the government is doing and saying. So I think that's, that's the whole thing. So I don't know how to end this, but salamat sa interview. <laughs>